Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Productivity uh, kind of channel with Francesco D'Alessio. I'm Francesco D'Alessio, and I'll be your host today. And in this episode, we're going to be focusing in on how to utilize a task management system as a student, being able to kind of organize all of your information, all of your tasks, and all of your time, uh, all inside a specific application. Um, in this kind of episode, we'll be focusing on Todoist as an application. Um, I find it pretty useful. It's a really fantastic service. And I think it's a great entry level uh, tool for those students who are looking for a kind of interactive experience, but as well as kind of completing the activities they've got for their assignments. Um, and this actual episode came in from someone on YouTube um, called Cody, who actually was really interested in uh, whether I'd be doing a, a allowed to do an episode on this. And I thought this was perfect timing. Um, because it's kind of gives the opportunity for students to go away, watch this. You know, if they've got summer exams, they can apply it to it. If they've not, um, then they can apply it to their next year. A lot of students go away. They go mental over the next couple of weeks um, and really, really eager on uh, trying to organize themselves for 2015, 16. So this should be the perfect episode. Uh, and it hopefully will be a bit of timeless content um, for you to go away. So we won't be talking about specific tools in this. Uh, we'll be more talking about the concepts and how to implement tools around those concepts. So let's get into the episode. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to kind of uh, over uh, talk. Um, I want to kind of get straight into it. So um, first thing to do, you can how you can utilize uh, Todoist uh, and all those kind of task manager applications is to kind of set out your target. And it's important to understand that uh, you've got to be. Um, aware of what kind of work you've got to do across the year and you've got to be uh you know really important to keep that as a focus um and and i found a really useful way of doing this and I actually found this out through twitter uh, with friends so what you do is you put a uh, a, a multiplication uh, symbol up here and then you press space and what you can do here is you can simply add in any of your targets for this project so what i'm going to put here is i'm going to put uh, finish coursework on I don't know how to spell Napoleon, uh, but I'm going to put Napoleon here. And then, as you can see here, it doesn't come up as a task. It comes up as a, a, a kind of like a fixer at the top of this page. So when I go down into this project down here, sorry about all these random ones here. So when I go down into this project here and I click in, it automatically comes at the top. It's almost like your benchmark. It's your understanding of what you've got to do for the year. So you could even, you could have a couple of these. I mean, uh, example here, you could have finish. Um, and these are all targets. These aren't specific tasks. They're things that you want to reach towards. You know, finish um, primary research into what people thought of the Napoleon War. I don't, I don't do history. Uh, and then all you do is you simply don't add a due date to them. Um, and they'll pop up at the top and they'll be your kind of targets for the year. And that's quite nice to have that because you can go into that project and you can see those things at the top. So that's a kind of top tip entry level uh, information there. On top of this, also, it's important to chunk your time. Um, a lot of students will just put uh, down here, write 1,000 word essay, um, write 1,000 word essay for Napoleon essay. <laughs> I really, uh, for NAP essay. Um, and they'll just kind of work towards this one target, targets, task. And this task might take like one whole month to complete. And when they actually tick that off like that, they'll kind of be depressed because it took that long to tick it off. Um, and there's actually a lot more kind of breakdown inside that. You know, there might be research you might need to do. There might be specific, uh, you might not have the time to write a thousand words in a day. Um, and it really is a kind of negative experience for people. So being able to break it down like this. So if you had that kind of, uh, essay you could probably write essay at the top you know i'm going to put uh two exclamation marks next to it on todoist allowing you to kind of bold it and then inside here you can write 100 word introduction um about and then you could add some context either here or in the notes um so context is basically the information around that task and then over here of course you can um, i'll assign this for tomorrow uh put a priority level to it and then press enter and then with this, you see this is the essay. This is the kind of main task. You simply drag this over to the right and you can have it as a subtask. And subtasks are really important because up here you could put, you know, this is the end of your essay, it's full completion, the end of the month. Then everything inside that is going towards the target. So next one could be research, um, Napoleon's hat. I really don't know about history um, and this is why it's weird. So on Saturday, you know, that could be a quite high one. 
and then I'll drag it into as a subtask. So you're continually building up towards completing this task, but also having small targets as you go through. You're chunking down your task, your main large task, to be able to move forward with the actual actions of it. So that's really, really important for students to know that they can actually subtask things and create real value by breaking things down. So the next thing also on top of this is you have the ability to share and collaborate with friends. So if I were able to, you know, type in any person's email address there, um, it would send them an email saying, would you like to join and collaborate on this task? They would, you know, jump into Todoist or whatever app you're using and they'll be able to join that group. And the benefit to that is, let's say I did, um, I was able to do that and share that. I won't share it now, um, but what I can do is then I could go, um, okay, you know, um, let's say it's a group bit of group coursework, um, research um, into the fourth year of battle. I don't know. Um, I really don't know anything about Napoleon. I should do some work on it. Anyway, uh, let's say I put it as tomorrow, Tom. Uh, and then over here, what would come up is it would come up as a kind of little picture. Um, and then you'd be able to assign that to someone else. And that's fantastic. And you can add all the same contacts. You can even add notes if you've got premium and add um, the ability to add reminders if you've got premium too. Um, but it's pretty cool. Like, So you have the ability to uh, kind of nag your friends and assign things to them for them to do. Uh, and that's useful, you know, whether you're in doing some group coursework or not. And that's really powerful. So the next thing on top of that is obviously you sometimes have the ability to, um, you have the ability to basically, you want to create some sort of checklist. Um, so down here, if you see what I'm doing here is I'm creating a checklist project, right? And you want to checklist your course. So you want to make sure you know, you've know you checked the title. You want to make sure you've checked everything like that. So let's say um, I'm just going to make a checklist here, right? And all I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know, check title, uh, check image, check links. So this is inside your coursework. So I've got this kind of checklist going. I'm going to create them as subtasks. And this is just a really basic list. But what I can do is if I press task actions and then I press export as template. So what's happening is it will download in the background as a template, right? So it's just done that. And what I can do is I can go back over to my GCSE history one and I can click task actions and I can import a specific checklist or or, or template, sorry. Um, and as this loads, hopefully it will load in a sec. Um, and what, what I can do is basically drag in that exported project that I just did. And that allows me, uh, just give me a sec, um, I'll just refresh the page. Um, that basically allows me to actually add a project within a project. And I'll just demo this for you right now, uh, if, if it's going to load. Um, okay, so what would come up would be just below add task would be that checklist. It would be the exact same checklist as this. It's basically copy and pasting this into that. And why that's useful, imagine if you had loads and loads of GCSE uh, modules or subjects, and you wanted to be able to bring in that kind of checklist system so you're not missing out anything. Um, you could do that. You could just simply import project all the time um, and then bring it in. I'm not too sure why it's not working. Maybe they've just got a bit of downtime. But anyway, it works great. Um, I've used it before. Uh, I'll give, just give you a quick demo. So I've just got templates over here. Um, and there you go. So I, uh, if I'm on Twitter, um, if I need to socially promote something that is on my mind or something like that, then I'll have this kind of checklist built in. So I can export this, import it in, and then I can be able to tag it to a task or inside a task and then actually go through all that list without me having to continually import it and it being an absolute nightmare to deal with. So overall, uh, this kind of tools are really useful. If you're using to do this premium, you can actually add labels. And what labels are useful for, let's say um, I'm going to be on the train for this I, I need to complete this task on the train, or this task is going to take 40 minutes precisely, or this task I need my Chromebook to complete, or this task I need to be uh, proactive, which means I need a lot of attention to complete. I can do that. And then what's beneficial is, let's say I'm wandering around my day and I'm a student and I'm like, okay, I've got my Chromebook. Uh, that's cool. So I'm going to click in and see what tasks I can complete on my Chromebook, which is awesome. So you've got that real functionality around the label system. Also, as a student, you need to be able to prioritize tasks. So as you go across, you know, you know, you might be adding, you might not necessarily have uh, everything under this essay thing, um, but you need to be able to kind of prioritize things. 
uh, and it becomes really useful when you know primary research let's say is uh, so complete primary research is a priority task and you can choose out of them so that's you know let's assign this actually as a red task um, and then you can actually from here um, be able to see what priority tasks are and I believe up here what you can do uh, sorry about that is actually sort them by priority so I can quickly in one couple of seconds, uh, one or second, so seconds, find out what the most important thing to do is in that specific group and actually go and action that as fast as I can. And you can do that with date, you can do that with name, um, and that's really awesome. And also, you know, emailing tasks in this project is really important too. There's a lot of functionality around it and it's really, really cool when you get involved. Um, let me just try out this import project thing because I really want to be able to showcase uh, how it works. Um, but I think it's, there's some downtime at the moment. Um, but basically, um, I've been using Todoist for a while and uh, and all these other applications as well for student. And if you're able to organize, if you're able to break down tasks, you know, not the right 1,000 word essay, but actually break it down into write 100 or write 200, uh, whatever works for you and actually break it down, but also keep everything collected. So as ever something comes in, collect it and keep it organized. So what I'm doing now is I'm just importing that final checklist. And as you can see, that checklist has come through, uh, not properly, but it normally does. Um, and from here, I can kind of tick off the same sections. Um, and then, you know, you don't have to worry about having to recreate a new checklist every single time on every single module. And you can kind of just chuck in a template. So overall, guys, I really hope this one was helpful for you to kind of just play around with. Um, I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually delete all of these because I don't actually need this template or folder. Um, but I hope it was useful for those students out there who are looking to really take functionality around um, their day. This works on smartphone. This works great. Uh, and it's actually really, really good fun. So that's how you use uh, Todoist and Task Management app to utilize uh, any exams, any coursework, any information that you have around academia and how you can improve things in the future with that. So I hope this episode was really useful for you guys and I'm looking forward to your feedback and anything you'd like to me to go onto more detail with because there's obviously quite a lot of information there. Um, and then as things progress, you can start adding these emoji because they're pr pr pretty cool. So I'd like to thank everyone else. Um, if they would like to subscribe, I would love you to subscribe. So please hit the subscribe button and also tweet me at Francesco D underscore A-L-E-S. I'm looking forward to your responses and having a good old chat with you and showing some more about how productivity can be useful as a student. So um, looking forward to you, looking forward to seeing you guys soon. Make sure to have a great week and keep productive. Bye-bye, everyone.